Welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the three games on Saturday. We're going to jump back in and go through those games there and have a little update on our people squad. So we're currently sitting at 844 with two players remaining with, with Little and also Dane Laurie. So fairly happy with what happened yesterday. We had Cleary, who at, got 96 as our captain for 192. We had a few average scores in, in Kelly and Lamb in the, in the 30s there, but picked up Tedesco with 75 and, and Crichton there with 67, which is great. Um, so it's rounding out a, a fairly decent week. We're currently ranked at 2545, and I'd expect with, with these two to, to finish off the round somewhere around 2500 to 3000, but we'll, we'll see how it shakes out and we'll see what, how many players everyone's got left. But we'll, uh, we'll jump into those three games and we'll start with, with the Warriors and the Titans. And just some general thoughts on the game. I thought the Titans were really poor. A team that we thought was going to be a lot better. I didn't think they played very well at all. And, and the Warriors were actually fairly decent. And, and that showed with, with a bunch of their players. And you can see that their signings this year through the middle had, had really has really improved them. Fanua Blake was strong. You had Bailey Sirenen who scored on an edge. Toe Harris was his normal self through the middle. You had Armel off the bench who had an amazing game. But that's where I saw the majority of this game was played through the middle. And, and you could see that with the, the scores and the outside backs. So apart from Fogarty... Getting th uh, 63 there, all the other scores, apart from the one try score in, in Thompson, was was through the middle. A lot of tackling, a lot, a lot of runs, and and that showed with some lower scores from a couple of the outside backs, which we'll, we'll go through in a second. But we'll start with, with Jamal. At 63, he just, just does everything. And, and in a team that really struggled, he still got 63, which is amazing signs for anyone that wanted to pick him up. And... I'm re regretting not spending a little bit extra cash on him. And obviously with, with Cook going so bad, I would have liked to have that one back. But Foggy was always someone that I was talking about in the in the preseason and, and great signs for him to, to do really well in a team that, that played poorly. Fanuel Blake got got 56 minutes for an average of, of for 63 with 200 metres, which was amazing. So in that four offloads and five tackle rates, you'd expect in, in a 200 metre effort. Uh, and did really well for anyone who brought him in. Bally Sirenen was an interesting one. Only played the 49 minutes, but got the got the try and made, and made 37 tackles in that time. So awesome work for him, and, and well done to anyone who picked him up, but he's still not going to be an option if he's going to be playing 49 minutes, even in the starting side. Terry Harris, exactly as he averaged last year, and, and got the 80 minutes. So for anyone that was worried about that, he's going to get that 80 minutes because they had a, they had their full squad uh, on, on the park on the weekend. Cody Karima did a bit of everything, got the goal kicks, scored a try, 23 tackles for three misses is pretty solid, and, and 300 meters, 300 kick meters as well. So did a bit of everything and, and did really well for anyone who picked him up. Armel is the, the upsetting one. We spoke about him a lot in the preseason and ended up being at 360k coming off the bench was just a little bit too much for us to, to bring him into my side, especially, and I know a lot of people felt the same way really high on him and hoping he was getting that that starting spot with a really nice ppm but on the bench got 42 minutes which was which was good and i'd expect something similar to a 35 to a 40 output from him in a general game but managed to score a try and, and get a tackle break in that so bumped up to a 61 so for anyone who brought him in well done he looked great for feeder did what he needs to do got 60 points in 70 minutes which is exactly what we expect almost you know almost 30 tackles 116 meters five tackle breaks three offloads and a and a, a, a turnover tackle so did really well but did come off in the last 10 minutes which is interesting you're probably hoping for him to get 80 minutes so he can you know very consistently knock out that 60 points but did exactly what we what we thought he would fought awake it was strong through the middle point a minute for 53 minutes Corey Thompson was great on on the edge as well Harris DeVito came out and, and scored a 50, which was great. Had a, had a try assist, 23 tackles for one miss, which was awesome. Three tackle breaks, 68 metres, 260 kick metres. So did really well, and anyone who decided to bring him in over someone like Lamb, well done to you. He, uh, him and Cody were sort of split split the, the job evenly and, and did really well. And maybe in a, when they don't go as well you know, against a, a, a Roosters or something like that, he might get a few more missed tackles, which you could see with with a few of uh, like DCE and those guys just missed a bunch of tackles against a you know really strong outfit, but did what he needed to do. Tyron Peachy got 51 minutes for just under just under a PPM of one at 49 there, 35 tackles, two tackle breaks, 120 meters. So 
really good for those that picked him up and anyone who decided to put him in the centers. Well, well done to you. Mitch Rain only got 54 minutes, which was expected, but had a nice PPM. As I said, a lot of the work was through the middle, and, and that shows with someone like Rain scoring at almost a, a 1 PPM. Jazz Tavanga, 47. If anyone who has him did all right. Hikuyu in the centers. Proctor, not really relevant. But Tino, 41 in 64 minutes. So I'm personally really happy with these minutes, but the score was a little bit underwhelming. Yes, he didn't have any tackle, uh, you know, many tackle breaks or any any tries or any attacking stats. But you know, if you can if you can hope for a, that kind of minutes, I'd expect him to be getting somewhere in the 40s in, in just his base. And then if there's any attacking stats on top, he will get the 60s and and hopefully round out a season average in the you know the mid 50 or just in the low 50s. With 32 tackles for six misses. He's he's someone that just puts it puts a hand out a couple of times or goes in hard at the tackle and and come, sometimes bounces off, so he's that type of player. And But 32 tackles and 150 metres in his, in his time it was really good, and, and I wouldn't be worrying too much about him at this stage. You know, he's, he's priced at, at 43, so only just was under his average, and, and those minutes are really uh, really helpful, and I think he'll do well if he gets that type of minutes going forward, so don't worry too much about him. Brimson with 34, and Roger with 33. So two of those guys that we think are going to be at 50 point or so keepers in the in the wing fullback just didn't get to do too much. Brimson did get some attacking stats, so that will be slightly concerning. But he just couldn't get involved too much with the Titans getting dominated through the middle and and them not being able to do as well there. Roger, same thing. 33 33 points, 175 meters, three tackle breaks. Just just a very standard game. And and this is kind of the low you would expect from Roger. And you know more games when he gets some attacking stats up in the 60s and, and rounds out around that 50 odd average, so nothing to worry about with Roger. Obviously, if you picked Roger over or or Brimson over a Pappenhausen, that's a bit annoying, but he'll be fine. Katoa got 62 minutes. Kelly again another 30 score in the outside backs with with Paddy Herbert there. Both just did okay. Didn't get to do too much as their team wasn't doing very well. Aitken, 26. Very, very quiet game for him with zero tackle breaks, which is very rare. If you guys are thinking about Taylor, but I think Fogarty is definitely the, the premier half in this squad. Meldrick Masila got 32 minutes as, as that in, impact player off the bench. And same thing, didn't get any tackle breaks. So end up with a low score of 20. And Fusatua, for anyone who's thinking about him, got a 13. So I hope a lot of you took my advice and, and didn't pick him up. But that's, uh, that's that game there, guys. So clearly dominated by the Warriors, and, and you can see that, and a lot through the middle, and you can see that with the scores and the outside back. So let me know what kind of plays you had in that team, and hopefully we can uh, work out some trades if needed. But I wouldn't stress too much about those outside backs in those teams. Alrighty, move to the Roosters, and this was look at this dominated the first six scores are all Roosters players, and, and fair enough. Brett Morris for three tries, Tedesco for three tries, both look electric. Him and yeah, Brett and Josh there both getting getting records, boys of Brett moving up to fourth all time and, and Josh getting his 150th try, which is incredible. Um, they're both still just as fast as ever. You saw Saab um, and Garrick trying to trying to chase Speemoz and he was just didn't even get out of second gear. So awesome work for him. Um, Tedesco, great. Good, well done to anyone who picked him up. Crichton, he got 67, snuck, snuck, snuck a try in there, but it was interesting to see this game, uh, is it going to be like this for the majority of the games? But against Manly, they found a bit of a, a weak side on, on their left edge and, and went down the, the right regularly. So Kiri, Tupanua, Manu and Brett Morris there just absolutely dominated the whole game. And you see all the highlights is just down that side with that one try from Crichton more th like just off the left left edge, like in, in the middle still um, off a short ball. So... You can see with a, a few of those scores there that you know Kiri was more dominant on the right, but some of the games they're going to come up against some teams that have a better left edge defense and and they should be going left a little bit more. You know Kiri might swing around with Lamb and and Crichton, and you've got Josh Morris and, and Tupo on the other side, so you know they're not going to go cold forever. But that's how I saw this game it was it was very much dominated down the right hand side, and and that's why you can see a few lower scores from guys like. Uh, Lamb and, and Crichton's base stats are being a little bit lower, didn't get as many metres gained, um, which resulted in a, a few less attacking stats in his offloads and, and tackle breaks. But Tupanua ended up with with a try, almost had two, but really strong. You know, got the 80 minutes for, for 62 points, and without the try, you're looking in somewhere in the 40s, which is kind of what we'd expected from him to be a, a season-long average. 
Collins had a really good game, got 63 minutes. I don't know if that's going to continue when you see down here Takiyaho got 43. So a little bit worrying for those people that, that had Takiyaho. He, he got a try assist and four goals in his time for, you know, for a great PPM and ended up with 51 being what his average, but you'd be hoping for somewhere between the high 50s to 60 minutes for him. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, but he's obviously not a trade-out target yet. Jaboyevich did his thing. Kiri had a few people that are interested in Kiri, and he was definitely dominant, as I said, on that right-hand side. Three, uh, three try assists, 400 kick metres, you know, 15 tackles for no misses. Just a really strong game for Kiri all around, and, and we'll make some money because of it, but I, I wouldn't be thinking about bringing him in. If he started with him, great. If not, then I wouldn't be trying to you know, push your way into to bring in someone like him. Uh, Sirenen did okay. Josh Morris, that's fine. Manu is our keeper in the centres, you know, averaging the mid-40s. Cherry, Cherry Evans was really disappointing. Had a, had a bunch of errors, seven missed tackles. I don't think he's going to have a game like that again. You know, for, for a really bad game for him to get 42 is okay. But it, you know, you could be expecting somewhere in the 50s, but Manly are going to be a pretty bad side, so just something to think about with them. To power, 47 minutes for 40. Hope you didn't bring him in because you'll lose a little bit of cash. Alloway, Tupo, all the guys we weren't too interested in. Talked about Paseca a little bit, 32 in 42 minutes, so nothing crazy for him. Andrew Davey came off the bench and got five tackle breaks in his 35 minutes for 32, so we'll make a tiny bit of cash. Lucky Lamb, so as I said, majority of the, the work was done down the right-hand side. Base stats were fine, 18 tackles for a miss, he's like he's really good in defence, which was great, which we already spoke about. Got the turnover tackle, which was cool, 57 metres gained, 134 kick metres. So if you can hope for sort of 15 to 20 points in, in tackles, you know, 10 or ten to 15 points in, in his metres gained and kick metres, then you're looking at, you know, somewhere around 30 points in base. And then in a team that's going really well, I'd expect him to get the odd try assist or try. Um, on that left edge, and, and you're looking for scores somewhere in the mid-40s to 50. A little bit concerning, the fact that Kiri was the complete dominant playmaker, but we thought that was going to be the case. My my thing for him was that he does a little bit of everything, and, and in a Roosters side that's going to do well, he should get some points there. So nothing too concerning at this stage. We'll see how someone like Townsend goes today. If uh, if he, you know, at the same price, if he proves us wrong and, and averages 45 to 50, then, then that sucks if you pick Lamb over him. But at this stage, nothing to worry about. Rest of the game, the big one there is is Lockie Croker, 24 minutes, got the whole 80, but you know, five missed tackles, 34 tackles in that game. So a lot of these manly guys did get a lot of missed tackles, just just with the fact that Roosters were so strong, you know, so light on their feet and, and can break some tackles, and and Lockie was a was a you know in full force of that, unfortunately, and and didn't do so well. And I decided to pick him up, and that 24 was a little bit annoying. You'd be hoping for somewhere in the in the mid thirties in, in his eighty minutes at least, and you know hopefully a few runs out of dummy half. But we'll see what happens against a, a slightly lesser team than the Roosters. Gusevsky had forty five minutes for nineteen, even with a try assist, so it wasn't very good, and and that's kind of normal for him, unfortunately. Dylan Walker with fourteen in his eighty minutes again in a team that got smashed. Same with Saab, you know, seven points in the full eighty, not very good at all. They they should improve a little bit, but I don't see a lot of upside with those type of players. Alrighty, move on to our last game, and my, my poor Cowboys got smashed. Not as bad as more Manly did, but 24-0, couldn't even get on the board. What we saw this game is just a just a very dominant Panther side that, that did what they needed to do to win, and and there was a few standouts you know, across the park. They're very well-rounded, and you can see, even with, with Liam Martin coming off the bench now, we could see their, the way that, that that bench was made up and where the players played now. So you got... Cleary, who absolutely dominated, as per usual, without even scoring a try this time, got 96. And he just fills the stat sheet with everything. And I hope that you'd taken my advice and brought him in and captained him, and you would have, you, know, you would end up with a pretty decent score this week. Brian Toto, oh, 79. He looks like he has gone to the next level. Did get 12 tackle breaks with a try and two line breaks, but you know, I'm expecting him to average around the 50 mark this year. And 79, you know, games of 79 is going to help with that. I expect his base to be somewhere around 35 to 40 with, with you know, meters gain or close to the 200 with, you know, five to six tackle breaks. <clears throat> it's going to be really helpful for him. You got Robson at 59 in 56 minutes. So 
with those types of minutes, I wouldn't be thinking about him at this stage, even though he is, you know, priced under that 59. Dylan Edwards at 58 was really cool. Got a bunch of a uh, bunch of attacking stats, filled up the stat sheet. So well done if you picked him up. Fisher Harris got 61 minutes, which is great. He's scoring about just you know just over where he's priced. Morgan did really well with 52 in the 80 minutes, all just mainly from base, which is great. Two uh two turnover tackles just to add to it for the extra, but he'll he'll make a little bit of money and you know we're expecting him to to average somewhere in the mid 40s, and he did really well there. Isaiah Yo got the 70 minutes of 51 and even with a try, which is a little bit annoying, but not much you can do there. Capewell got the start. So the setup they went with was Capewell playing the first 66 minutes straight. Liam Martin came on around the 30 minute mark. And you know, when, when Kikau came off, Capewell moved over to that left hand side. Martin goes onto the right edge. And then right at the end of the game, uh, Kikau come back on and took off Kate Wall there. So kind of pretty much what we thought would, would happen in, in Kate Wall to get around the 60 odd minutes. Martin was just a little bit less and then kick out was somewhere in the 40s, which we'll, we'll see shortly. But yeah, I think that worked out pretty well for Kate Wall and you know, got the 50 with the try. So without the try, he's, somewhere, he's sitting somewhere around the, the mid 30s to 40, which is a little bit annoying. But if you picked him up, you're pretty happy at this stage as he as he got some some high minutes. Mitch Dunn got 48 minutes. Uh, 48, points in the 80 minutes so got the full game 45 tackles which was great so if he's going to work hard like that then i think he's going to be good for your side i spoke about jensen at 350k got 42 in 42 minutes so you know with them playing town below a few less minutes there's there's some there's some minutes available and when you got granville on the bench as well i think you know he did really well and looked strong and and hopefully he can average that for for teams going forward spencer Liniu came on and did really well all in base stats you know, two tackle breaks, one tackle turnover, no demerit points, 17 tackles, 145 metres, which was great. So anyone who picked him up, well done. Eisenhuis got 38 minutes. Momorowski was pretty strong, all in base again with one one line break, 40 and 80 minutes. So if you picked him up, happy days. No, not much more to say there. Kikau got 43 minutes and Martin got 51. So for 38 and 36 respectively, nothing too much to say there. That's kind of what we expected with those guys. Kikau is probably a little bit low at 43, but... I'd expect him to be up near 50 a little bit with his minutes. Jerome Luai didn't even kick at all, which was interesting. So Cleary did all that, all the dominant kicking, and, and Luai kind of just did his thing. You know, expect some games wherever he scores the odd try, which will bump him up in the 50s to 60, and then a few like a few games like this, will, which will be his base. Moses Leone only got 34 minutes, which is interesting. I don't know if this is going to happen going forward. I think we'll have to see another round or two to, to work out how many minutes he, he will get, but he needs somewhere around the 45 minutes to make some cash and a little bit annoying for anyone who picked him up at this stage. Tao Malolo, 51 minutes, only got 33, so didn't have a lot of impact, 73 metres, so crazy. Obviously, Penrith did dominate the game and and there's not a lot of big uh, metres out, out of the Cowboys pack, but that's really concerning, but good for his price dropping. For anyone who brought him in, oh no, but for anyone who didn't, then that's, that's going to be good. Same with Coruscant, played 48 minutes. We're not sure if there's a little bit of an injury there, but we'll have to wait and see. 48 minutes was was a little bit less, and I would expect him to, to play more if he was fit. But again, you know, when they're doing well and and ahead against the Cowboys, and you don't want to risk anything like that. So it came off for 33. So I hope not many people picked him up, but if you did, good luck with that one. We got a Hamiso at 31. Got a got a try save and, and was fairly solid. Just just again, just that limited run meters if he gets if he has a few more of them i'd see a few tackle breaks in there and and with 30 being about his base which is cool so any any attacking stats and you're up in the 40s so you just get he should get his hands on the ball a little bit more at center and really happy with his defensive work 16 tackles with no misses and two forced uh, tackle turnovers so really good there Crichton again needs the needs all the attacking stats to do really well Holmes and Drinkwater both 23 so yeah, I'd see I'd see a lean leaner year for these type of guys. Obviously not going to play Panthers every week, but there's not a lot there for him, I don't think, this year. You got Charlie Staines with 20 in the 80 minutes. Didn't do much at all, and he's someone that doesn't make a lot of meters. He's very different to Brian Toto. In he's always, you know, he's usually around under that 100 meters made. And then Isan Masters was the only one relevant one, and he got 14 in 80 minutes, which was not good at all. Nine tackles, six tackles missed which was uh, not good, 97 metres, you know, only 
only the one offload, one tackle break. So not good if you picked up him. There's a few cheaper options that did a little bit better. But there you go, guys. That's the uh, that's the wrap up for Saturday. Uh, let me know your thoughts on those games and and if you think any of those trends will continue. And uh, let me know how you, no, let me know how your teams are going with with the last couple of games to go. And good luck today for the rest of the round. And, and please hit subs uh, subscribe if you if you're new to the channel and and hit like and that would be really helpful for us here. But other than that, guys, enjoy the day. See ya.